so hello, uh, hello, hello, welcome everybody. Um, this is Astrid with Spiritual Alchemy Show. Um, welcome and I'm glad to be here again. Um, so yet again, um, welcoming uh, you all from my Alchemy Tower here in Prague where I moved about two months ago from London. Uh, so I'm currently uh, doing this show from here. Um, I'm also I decided as as I moved to Prague that I can kind of use all the uh, the magical um, events in Prague and all the magical legends to kind of make this tiny little series about uh, magic and alchemy in Prague. So I decided to this particular uh, series, this particular episode, to be dedicated to extremely uh, famous legend of Golem of Prague. Um, loads of people heard about it. I would say almost everybody. Uh, it's very popular, even though it's not the only story uh, about the golem that was created by a Jewish rabbi. Uh, I would say the Prague one is definitely the most uh, the most famous one. And uh, loads of people, loads of tourists are coming to Prague to see uh, the old new synagogue, where according to the legend, uh, golem is currently hidden. Then. Loads of people are um, will use definitely like buying like loads of golem merchandise. You can find um, in Prague a golem, uh, something going west around around uh, around the old new synagogue and all sorts of uh, other golem related um, activities. Also, golem was actually one of the main characters in very popular Czech uh, movie that was actually uh, created or that the movie. It's like kind of like a fairy tale movie from like from I believe fifties or sixties, uh, where one of the main characters are actually John D, uh, Magister Kelly and Golem and Rudolph the Second. So um, Golem definitely is popular in the Czech and German, um, I would say, culture. Uh, we also have quite a few different movies. One of the first ones about Golem being created uh, all along in nineteen twenties and. Then a kind of couple of different uh, places where Golem actually took uh, one of the main roles um, in a film and in the movie. So um, the need to actually make the Golem legend uh, real uh, in terms of a, a book uh, like the one uh, written by Gustav Mehring or actually doing it um, as a movie is as old as let's say the movie as 1920s. So we have this uh, legend that's very old and somewhat very popular. So I decided, lots of people know about it. So I decided uh, to make this show, uh, let's say for people who are maybe not that familiar with the legend or just for people who would like to find out uh, more about it. And uh, this particular show was very interesting because as I was doing all the different research, well, the great thing about this legend about Golem is that the more you kind of uh, go and do your research, the more questions kind of appears. But I guess, you know, that's pretty much what all researches uh, you can do about topics that are bas basically 600 years old. So uh, loads of the things are kind of like... Uh, questions, loads of the things are kind of like unknown, loads of the things are questionable or contradictive and it's hard to find an actual uh, historical resources. But we actually do, ha do, do have some, uh, it was one of the things I would like to also uh, present it uh, today. So today we are not just going to talk about the, the Golem legend on its own but also some uh, realia and what we actually historically known uh, about Golem being true and uh, what we basically don't know as much uh, to be true. So what actually is a golem uh, for those who are not aware of that? A golem is basically a fake human or humunculus who is supposed to be made out of clay and uh, for a person to be able to create uh, a golem uh, has to be a Jewish rabbi. Uh, the one who created according to the legend a legend uh, the Prague one was called the Rabbi Liv, and uh, he created it in Prague around 1580s, so about 600 years back. And golems are operated uh, by a magical sham. Uh, according to some legend, sham is basically a little clay ball. According to some legend, it's just a tiny little scroll, 
uh, according to other legend it was um, it was a table with a sign with the magical words that was uh, hanged on a, on a golem uh, uh, neck so we have quite a different few options what Shem Ham Forash actually was but the important bit that Shem was something that was activating uh, the, the, the the golem and whoever activated the golem with the Shem ha Shem was the one who was giving him the orders and was the one that golem was listening to and basically obeyed uh, so in most legends uh, the Shem is basically a paper with the sacred words Shem Ham for Raj uh, which in Kabbalistic traditions is uh, Hebrew uh, Hebrew one of the Hebrew v variations of a unspeakable name of God Yod -ve Yahweh uh, so the Shem Ham for Raj is pretty much the same thing just in a just in a slightly different form and um, with this we have to understand that in Kabbalistic tradition the words are not just words but the Kabbalistic and Hebrew words are meant to be literally the building blocks of the universe uh, therefore all Kabbalistic uh, tradition and Kabbalistic magic uh, is very much a lot about breath and words as those seems to be uh, very uh, very important for Kabbalistic traditions the words and the the, the speech um, is something that's absolutely sacred and has a very high uh, position uh, within that within that tradition so we know that about as I mentioned before about at least four or five different rabbis who are meant to uh, be able to make a golem um, and uh, what was the purpose of a golem to create one uh, usually all the stories about golems all around mostly Europe um, been about the same topic basically almost seems like it's one legend like slightly adjusted to a different places but in most cases golem was made to help uh, the Jewish people of the town to protect being protected um, against cr Catholics or Christians and also help with a uh, heavy heavy um, heavy work and heavy machinery golem also really supposed to be um, a creature of a temper but also of a great strength uh, so uh, we have this like big I would say a lean machine made out of clay who doesn't really feel pain who uh, is just uh, un, um, you can't really make him tired and is helping and protecting uh, the Jewish the Jewish community so that's basically what and who uh, the golem is uh, later today um, on the show I'm actually going to read like the actual part of the story of how the how the golem was uh, created but I think I would like to actually start uh, it's going to be a little bit of a spoiler alert but I'm going to actually start with some little bit of a historical background and what we actually know about um, Jewish ghetto um, and Jewish Prague and Prague in uh, 1580s or the end of 16th century uh, in general uh, so with this whole uh, story or legend about Golem we can't really take it out of its context and the context of the legend would be naturally the position of a Jews and Jewish nation uh, throughout the Europe uh, throughout the Middle Ages so um, not just in Prague but in 16th 17th century uh, Jewish nation Jewish people will be always uh, somehow um, having a part of a city called the ghetto uh, and then basically they could not easily uh, just move out of and basically they're all staying in that in that area um, the Jewish nation didn't really have a great position in Europe uh, basically since always so the position was that um, Jewish uh, people in most cases have a uh, money that's not just a uh, you know a stereotypical or uh, stereotypical I would say gossip or stereotypical idea but actually is coming from an actual historical background where um, according to the Bible um, the Christians and Catholics could not lend money for a prophet and has that been a part of a new testament which is not part of a Jewish Torah uh, Jews could lend money for a prophet and as they been one of the few people who could do that they did 
and therefore they actually had uh, collected quite a substantial amount of money uh, throughout uh, throughout the throughout the centuries and also was the reason why then uh, why this basically started um, all of the Jewish jokes uh, which basically are coming from uh, practically and uh, only the reasoning that uh, Jews could lend money for a profit which Catholics according to the New Testament uh, shouldn't so um, that obviously shed some bad light on them according to the uh, also uh, because they haven't been uh, Catholics we are in um we are in the medieval Europe, where especially Catholic Church is having very strong, a uh, very strong position. Uh, it's not very happy about Protestant, uh, Protestant churches not mentioning uh, a Jewish, uh, Jewish church. So obviously that was not happy. They were not happy, and was one of the reasons why there was a political, uh, political uh, pressure uh, against Jews throughout the centuries. As uh, the Catholic Church were trying to establish their power, that they in many cases that was supposed to exceed the power of the actual government or a king or uh, a ruler or a secular uh, ruler of that particular country. So um, obviously that was not uh, an easy position to be in. Um, also, uh, Jews been actually uh, victims of many different uh, pogroms. Uh, pogroms usually uh, meant that uh, at some point uh, usually triggered by a king itself who in many cases actually uh, had uh, borrowed money uh, from Jews and they didn't want to pay them back which was the case of Charles IV um, then uh, as a result of the king not being able to pay money back to Jews he uh, conducted something that was called a pogrom and pogrom basically meant uh, that uh, loads of people went to the Jewish ghettos and killed uh, loads of people uh, during one night. So this whole idea of a crystal night that we know uh, from uh, Second World War was not completely a new concept and actually it repeated itself throughout the histories and centuries numerous, numerous times. So that's the kind of a picture, the position of a Jewish nation through um, in the times when actually Golan was created. And we can see that this is absolutely not a uh, <laughs> position to be envy of. Uh, this is a very, very uh, difficult position and uh, we have to understand that there is not really anybody at that time who would stand up for a Jewish nation. Um, the only reason why a king would stand up is because they, uh, they own the money. Um, so there was really nobody to kind of a cry to nobody to really uh, nobody to really complain to and uh, they really did have a position of kind of a punching bags um, of, a, of a history so one of the reasons I believe this whole uh, myth or legend about um, Golem was created I believe it was partially out of desperation to have at least some protector um, of a Jewish nation that really didn't have any uh, at that time and the danger for the nation was big on a daily basis and just keep coming back uh, in uh, in waves. So um, this is also not, this idea of legend or mythical uh, protector is not again a new concept. Um, that's something we can actually see all the way in old Egypt and Babylon when we are know that um, cities that were known to have uh, gold mines and been very rich for uh, gold and were actually created artificial legends about them about them being guarded by a uh, huge birds that when uh, that were actually killing all the enemies who were trying to get in that city or griffins or other mythical or mythical creature purely uh, to uh, potentially scare off uh, invaders who can be interested in a city that's filled with gold and obviously in, um, in you know in uh, Babylon and Egypt that was a uh, very important thing to, to guard uh, so those um, hist those legends or this myth uh, throughout the history have been created uh, to protect the cities uh, we can think about it as, as some sort of like original uh, public relations um, <laughs> or marketing or anti-marketing um, move which was proven to be working at the time so uh, and that makes sense that uh, the Jewish would uh, come with some sort of a uh, story about Golem and that was supposed to protect 
and obviously story about a big creature made out of clay that's never tired and is protecting Jewish nation sounds quite scary and loads of people didn't uh, really go to Jewish ghetto so they didn't really know that much what was going on in it and it had a little bit of a, like a mystique to it so I can clearly imagine that even though people been living in the same town even living a couple streets away from uh, a Jewish ghetto in Prague, they could easily be um, misled or told that there was a big clay creature that is um, taking care of it or protecting it as uh, they really did go into those parts. Um, so uh, obviously that was something that was fairly, fairly uh, believable. So what we know about the actual Rabbi Le. Um, that's interesting. That's a very interesting character. So Rabbi Lev, according to the legend, was the creator of the, the golem. What we know about Rabbi Lev that we know that that's not a legend. Um, Rabbi Lev was actual historical persona. We know that we, he existed. He was actually a very active pers- uh, person in a in a, uh, in a Jewish in a Jewish community. Uh, we know exactly when he lived, we know exactly where he lived, we know where he died, and we know um, that he was actually he actually created a school of Talmud. Um, he was very active in the schooling, uh, he was teaching, and we also know that he was a friend with Rudolf II, and he was in the Prague in the times when Rudolf II was uh, very much uh, supporting any sort of magic and alchemy and loads of alchemical workshops were actually hidden in the actual Jewish uh, Jewish ghetto. So we know for sure that uh, Rabbi Lev was somewhat at least interested um, in alchemy as uh, we know from our historical records from one of the alchemical workshops here in Prague that he did indeed visit that workshop who was uh, just a few streets from um, Rabbi's left house. So we know he has to be aware of the existence of the alchemical workshops in a, in a Jewish ghetto, and we know he had to be in some sort of a touch and some sort of a connection uh, with an alchemist uh, that been working there. We also know that he was meeting up with Rudolf II, who was uh, fond of anything that was magical, and was very much willing to f- uh, found financially anything that was connected to magic and to much and to <coughs> and to and to alchemy. So uh, we know that Ruby Love uh, was existing, and we know he had a very deep knowledge of Kabbalah. He was the one of the high r- highest rabbis uh, in Czech Republic of that time, and we know that he had a deep knowledge of Kabbalah, and we know that he was around Rudolf the Second, who was the key chief um, of, I would say, alchemy in the whole Europe, uh, maybe possibly ever. And um, we also know that he had a connection with alchemists and alchemistic workshops. So, um, you know, go and figure. (laughs) Even though we now do know that this idea that Golem was actually made and created by Rabbi Love uh, was actually connected to Rabbi Love much, much later, about two or three hundred years later, uh, was actually the story of Golem connected with Rabbi Love being the one who actually made it. Um, however, if you actually read Rabbi Love's actual historical uh, curriculum, uh, then you actually find out that this whole linking him with it actually makes quite a good sense is out of all the rabbis, he seems to have very good connection and very potential uh, good background of uh, what actually uh, what actually uh, could, do, could he could do at the time. So um, according to the legend, after uh, Rabbi Love destroyed the golem, again this was spoiler alert. Um, after uh, le- after the after he was destroyed, according to the legend, uh, his body of the golem was placed in the attic of a old new synagogue in Prague. What we know as um, again as a historical data, and what we know for sure, is that not many people been actually let into that attic. We know that. Uh, all the other attics of all the other synagogues 
in Prague are absolutely widely available. Just this one isn't. <laughs> uh, we only know uh, that past about 150 years, uh, according to uh, according to according to the um, the Jewish uh, community, only two people been actually let in that attic. Um, and actually, according to the legend, there are many legends that are actually saying that whoever will go into that attic will die immediately. There is horrendous death that are waiting for those who go into that attic, and um, people are just not being let in that attic. Um, I'm going to go a bit more um, in that attic and what actually been the two pe who been the two people who have been actually let in that attic in the past hundred years and what they found later on. Uh, but I'm going to actually also present um, three most popular theories about uh, what actually the golem is or who the golem was. So the three main theories are that obviously the first one that it was an actual magical being made out of clay that was possessed by a demon and uh, um, that was basically captured in a clay. Uh, another uh, story uh, that we know is that it was uh, possibly a human, maybe someone who was mentally ill or had some sort of a mental disease like a Down syndrome or something like that and uh, that was something that created a legend about somebody who was very strong um, and somebody who was very strong but had uncontrollable temper. And uh, the last story is that the, sto that the, the, uh, the golem itself was a mechanical toy created by Rabbi Love. So for all of those stories, uh, we have some pros and some cons. <laughs> Uh, if we actually read the legend of a golem uh, that I'm actually going to present to you and going to read for you later on, we know for sure that in this legend he's using all the four elements and Sheb Ham Faraj to give uh, a life to golem. The truth is that knowing uh, the usage of elements and in which, which order they are supposed to be used, as in the legend, they are used in the correct alchemical or hermetic order, which is water for um, fire first, then water, then air, and then earth. That's the correct hermetic order of elements according how earth and life was created. So somebody who made that legend had to have some sort of alchemical and magical knowledge, which is pointing to the fact that Golem indeed could have been a magical magical being uh, made out of clay um, however then the other legend that's called according to the historics obviously scientific historics uh, I would say the most popular is that Colin was uh, possibly a human uh, with some sort of a mental disability um, was perceived as over um, as a more than a human because he was uh, most likely a very big person and the reason why the, one of the reasons why the legend was created as uh, this person was somehow um, somehow taken care of um, with uh, by Rabbi Lev and was helping as a servant by the synagogue uh, according as according to the legend. There is a possibility that this person uh, this ability was actually trying to be cured uh, by Rabbi Lev again, who we know was interested in alchemy. Um, therefore had an access to uh, various medica medications and herbs um, was maybe trying to medicate him and uh, which one might be creating uh, like the state of uh, almost paralysis if he was taking some sort of uh, calming down pills for his temper and could have resulted by uh, Rabbi Lev forgetting uh, to give this person the medication which might have as according to the legend create uh, a big I would say attack of a tantrum uh, resulting in the golem uh, damaging and uh, breaking loads of uh, precious things 
and as a result, Rabilev uh, giving a higher dose of uh, of this medication to to, to the golem or the person, possibly resulting uh, in his death. And uh, because we are in the ghetto, and uh, a Jewish ghetto, and there is quite strong anti-Semitic uh, moods, obviously. This was not something that Rabbi Love and other ones and other uh, wanted to um, become a public the, um, this unfortunate death. So uh, it's possible that they hide, they hid the body at the attic or the old uh, old synagogue and uh, refused anybody uh, to to go there, creating uh, creating legends. So that's one of the theories of what actually or who actually Gulen was. And uh, for the story about actually being mechanical, um, there is uh, a story that, again, we might not know how real it is, how unreal it is, but um, according to the one story, actually, Voodoo of the Second was taken to Rabbi Love's house. And uh, when he was there, Rabbi Love was showing him things like mechanical clock, uh, mechanical statues that could talk or move and all sorts of other mechanical inventions so there is a chance of Rabilev actually being able um, and quite um, proficient in mechanics uh, being able to actually put together uh, a mechanical mechanical uh, statue or mechanical human so out of all of those three theories we always have something uh, to support them but we also have loads of things to disprove them. So that's one of the things that usually keeps legends uh, the most uh, interesting. That there is something you can catch yourself to. There is something you know for sure. Uh, but loads of things that you don't know. And it kind of lets your, um, it kind of lets your um, uh, fantasy going. I mentioned at the beginning that uh, two people were actually let. Uh, actually in the attic past hundred years to actually see if the golem actually is in that attic and uh, one of the first people who was actually let in that attic and it's somebody we have to mention was a guy named Egon Erwin Kish who was let allowed to, to go in this attic in 1915 uh, he was a journalist uh, writing for a newspaper called Prague Tagbat, and uh, he decided to go on the Atlantic and see if he can find any anything from uh, a golem and actually see if the golem is there. So he went there and uh, he just saw uh, some bats and uh, pigeons, and uh, he then he saw. A big piles of uh, gravel, and he is mentioning that if there is the golem is in the attic, he must be in the gravel. But he didn't dig in that gravel, and he didn't go any further, uh, coming to conclusion that except for the big piles of gravel, he did not see anything, and he left the uh, left the synagogue. And the other person who was led there uh, was a guy named Ivan Mekerle in the uh, 1980s, so about 40 years ago. He was actually doing quite extensive research of Golem of, and his existence. And Ivan Mekerle, as was, he, was, he is a person of a modern technology, he actually took a radar, like one of those uh, like hand radars for... Um, and radars for metals, metal detector, and a dual radar, and all of this, uh, all of this tech stuff. And he actually went inch by inch through those piles of a gravel to see uh, what is in them. And what he found, I'm going to actually leave uh, for the end of this show, so I'm not spoiling alert absolutely everything. So, <laughs> so uh, at the end of the show, I promise you will find out what was it that Ivan Mekerle actually found it in the gravel. And um, before I go there, I'm going to actually read, as I was talking about it quite a lot, um, this whole idea of um, the creation of Golem. 
So I'm actually going to read from the from the legend that I found um, online and uh, the, the actual legend of creation of, uh, of a golem. So <coughs> according to the legend, uh, one deep night, the Rabbi Love, who was uh, worried about the future of a Jewish nation, that was being attacked by Christians. While he was dreaming, he saw a sign in his dream. Make a human out of a clay that's going to help you against all the enemies. Rabbi Lev woke up and he was sitting deep, deep, almost into the morning and was looking for all, all the books and all the other papers and scroll to find what he was looking for. On a small little piece of a, per, uh, of a scroll, he noted a few little sacred words, and after that, and after that only, he went back to sleep. The next day, he called one of his, uh, one of his, uh, the two of his students, and asked him to help him. A few days after that, in the middle of the night, all three of them were dressed into the white gowns and led by the rabbi Lev, they decided to go behind the Prague's borders. Near the city of Ottawa, they found a place with a very soft and moist soil. During this during the during the moon uh, by the moonlight and by the light of the torches, they built a big man out of clay and call it the golem. Once they've been uh, done with the creation, the Rabbi Love told one of his students, you my dear, you have the nature of a fire. Now seven times walk around the golem and repeat the sacred words. Student done as he was told by the Rabbi. He went around the golem seven times and the clay body dried out. He went around the body for the second time and out of the golem started to come a heat. When he ended and finished the seven ra seventh round around the golem, his the golem body was hot and hot and red just like hot iron. Similar, similar order gave the rabbi to the second student. He told him, you have the nature of a water. Now go around the golem seven times and repeat the sacred words. As he started to go around the golem repeating the sacred words, the golem's body started to cool down. And as it was cooling down, the body started to have a color and a softness of a human skill. Once he finished the seventh round, Rabbi said, I have the nature of air. And he started to walk around um, the golem, saying the sacred words. And you, golem, have the nature of the earth. When he finished the seventh round, he moved above the golem's head, it opened its mouth, and under its tongue, um, he put a tiny little scroll with a mystical, with a mystical uh, scribbling. The golem suddenly opened its eyes, or his eyes, and slowly woke up. So this is how the golem was created out of f uh, four elements from earth, water, fire, and air. The golem was identical to human. Bill uh, he was just a bit bigger than the most other humans. And there was one thing that differs him from a regular human. He couldn't talk. The reason is, as not even the wisest rabbi can master all the secrets and the secret of speech 
is one of the secrets that's the bed most guarded so that was the that was the legend of how uh golem was created uh it was but it's 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 very beautiful and you can say that uh obviously um you have this idea of a four elements which is very alchemical so uh we know for sure that whoever made this uh legend had to know at least something about uh, about alchemy and um we know that the golem story continued with uh golem helping out in the synagogue uh golem helping out uh with uh various accusations of the jewish nations that were created and uh we know that according to the legend the rabbi Lev would use the the little scroll uh and take it out of golem on every saturday on sabbath uh to let him let him rest uh for one day and uh the legends now differs according to uh who tells them in some story rabbi Lev's daughter was sick so he forgot to put the the scroll out in some other ones he was um in a in a church and he forgot to uh take the take the the scroll out but what all the legends have in common is that at some point Rabbi Lev forget to get to put uh to take out the scroll out of the golem's mouth and uh he they did not give a golem work to do and as golem was uh not having anything productive to do he just had a big burst of temper and he started to destroy expensive furniture and expensive paintings and was just having a massive tantrum when rabbi lev saw that he ran to the golem took out the took out the scroll and he did not um he did not uh make him alive ever again and according to the legend he hide him on the attic of the of the old new synagogue so uh that was the legend about golem uh as it is in its in its uh some sort of a full splendor um still have to uh I still didn't tell you what actually was that ivan merk uh ivan um mekerle found uh on the on the attic when he was there in 1980s on the metal detector uh but i would like to use uh this five minutes before i'm actually going and tell you the biggest secret uh of this show and <laughs> what he actually did find there um i would like to give um a people uh, about five ten minutes op- uh, option they want to ask any questions about the golem story before i go to a grand finale uh about it uh just in uh just in case you just uh got into that show uh you can find the archive of the show on spiritual-alchemy.uk uh but I'm always uh posting uh the archive of the old shows and you can also uh add me on Facebook or the show on Facebook it has its own fan page called spiritual alchemy show if you would like to stay uh you know in touch just like to be informed about the shows and topics and whatever it's uh cooking in the spiritual alchemy world um in case you would like to ask me question about golem i would invite you to come to paraxradionetwork.com/live when there is a cute little blue uh chat window where you can ask me uh when you can ask me questions and your questions uh will be answered live uh on this show so ceiling cat is asking was it just a clay it was made from not an iron or other substance uh ceiling cat uh, so according to the legend um it was clay and uh in this particular legend uh we as it goes from the original uh, medieval legend we know that the golem was made out of clay but after he was made alive with a shem he was supposed to look just like a human but then if we fast forward to the 19th century we starting to have paintings of a golem being literally uh, a creature of a clay that looks like a clay so uh, and has like those i would say the iron 
like a belts over him but that it's a pretty much a modern picture that's pretty much a mod- modern imagination of the golem and it's not coming from the original story which is actually describing a golem as looking exactly like human uh, having a skin like a human just being bigger and not able to talk So Kat is asking, do other cultures have similar man-made entities in their beliefs? Um, they Oh, they definitely and they definitely do. Uh, Ceiling Cat is also mentioning, obviously, Eve from a Bible uh, was made uh, out of, uh, basically, out of uh, Adam Adam's ribs. Uh, but we also know that Adam was made out of uh, clay. Uh, so we have this idea of people being made out of clay, I believe, in Old Testament and um i'm actually as far as i know uh, i've heard similar stories uh that there was a human made out of clay that was serving somebody uh and it went then it went all wrong i've actually was um uh, from many different cultures actually but it was like it wasn't uh in many of the cultures it wasn't like the main myth uh, wasn't part of the main myth of the of the of the culture but i would say I've, I've seen it definitely in more than one place but actually to be like a golem golem, it doesn't have to be just prak golem, uh, but it has to be created uh, by a rabbi and has to be made out of clay and it has to have this sham ham forage cabalistic scroll uh, or plate uh, in it. A ceiling cat, is it the order that the original Eve was also supposed to be made of clay? Uh, yes, I believe. Uh, I'm I'm not uh, to be honest to be completely honest I'm not a Bible expert, but I know that um, I know uh, I know for sure that there are some uh, there are some different like people made out of clay in in Old Testament. Uh, Ceiling Kid is asking. Supposedly there were three Eves. The first was clay, as I recall. Didn't she become Lilith? Ah, uh, again I'm not I am not Bible but no not Bible expert, but I know about Lilith being the Adam Affili Billy first wife um that was sent away and then there was Eve. I'm not sure there was somebody in the middle. <laughs> cool. Great questions by the way. Thank you so much. <laughs> so um if anybody has any more questions about Golem that they would like to ask, please come to Par Radio Network um dot com slash live. Uh, ATM. I'm, I'm responding to questions uh, about Golem or Golem of Prague. If there's something you would like to you would like to ask, it's all result of my um, research here in Prague. I've done on the topic and what I kind of what I kind of seen, uh, what I kind of found out um, about it. So, um, if there will be some more questions. <laughs> Um, if Devi have any uh, more questions, I'm going to respond respond to them later on, and I'm now going to actually come and say what I what actually uh, Ivan Mekerle found um, in the synagogue when he actually went there with the iron detector. So as I mentioned before, um, according to the legend, uh, the golem uh, was hidden was hiding at the attic of old new uh, synagogue in Prague when it was closed by closed for possibly 500 600 years and nobody was allowed to go there except for two people I was mentioning before uh, one was uh, the journalist Egon Erwin Kish in 1915 and one was Ivan Mekerle in 80s uh, 1980s this so about 40 years back, 30 years back, and who went there with uh, iron, uh, metal detector and also geo radar to find what was in the piles of the gravel that Egon Erwin Kish was mentioning in 1950s. So Ivan Mekerle is somebody who is um, very much interested in all sorts of uh, mysteries, and I think all you para paranormal investigators, you would definitely like his work. And uh, he was very much interested in Golem and was done quite extensive research. Uh, him himself, as he's mentioning on the website, he is uh, most, I would say, uh, pro the, the theory that Golem was actually a person. 
um, with possibly some sort of a mental uh, mental disability. And uh, when he went uh, to that attic in the uh, 1980s with a metal detector, he went through all the piles of the gravel and uh, found absolutely nothing. Uh, there was no golem in the, in the, in the gravel. And uh, actually, when he was doing the radar, he found out that the gravel piles are actually much smaller than they thought as the the as the as the ceiling of the synagogue is actually higher uh, as they thought so uh, the gravel piles are not that big and he found absolutely nothing there uh, except for gravel and few little pieces of metal but what he did found there uh, was one of the wooden pillars that had a year on them of 1883 which was not something he was expect, as according to uh, the legend, the uh, attic should have been closed for 500 years, and nobody should been should have been there except for Ergun Evan Kish in 1915, who we know did not have done anything there. So, um, how this 1883 sign uh, appeared uh, on one of the pillars? Uh, Ivan Mekele found out that the synagogue was a and the attic of the synagogue actually went for reconstruction in 1883. So the fact that he did not found, uh, as he's mentioning himself, Golan there now does not mean he was not there before. As we know, at least somebody was there in 1883 and eventually could hide or get or store steal uh, the body of Golem uh, that was that was there. Uh, so no, neither Ergon Erwin Kish, who came there in 1915, or Ivan Mekerle, who've done his searches in the uh, 1980s, there would actually find his body um, of the of the Golem there. So even though uh, we know that um, the Golem is not in the attic of Old New Synagogue, uh, basically now for sure, we still don't know that maybe he was there and um, was taken God knows where. And it's interesting if I link this story uh, to a modern stories of uh, of a robots and um, robots who are being created first to help human and they have been used for hard work and at some point they go against the creator they are having their tan they're having some sort of a destructive tantrums and they had to be uh, had to be restrained contained killed taken batteries out taken shem ham forage out um, it's still the very same story we can find in uh, modern sci-fi stories um, which are basically just retold the story of a golem in a more s m modern or more sci-fi uh, background, but it's still the same story uh, we are we are talking about. So it's interesting to kind of go into it and try to figure out why is this story so ingrained in our human unconscious uh, memory and collective memory why we in our unconscious collective memory have this story of uh, fake humans turning against us and why this story seems to be appearing uh, almost from the dawn of our dawn of our humans and uh, on all sorts of different cultures and uh, why we are always so fascinated is it something uh, that maybe just maybe is a story of actual uh, future that was uh, engraved in our collective unconsciousness uh, maybe to warn us uh, if it's supposed to be there for that reason I'm not sure we are doing very well and another interesting thing is this connection of a whole Czech Republic and Czech lands with this ideas of a fake human uh, because Czech Republic is not just known for Golem as the first uh, most famous uh, fake human <laughs> made of the clay, but Czech lands are also known for the creation of the concept and the word robot 
as the word robot is of a Czech origin was first used by a Czech writer Karel Čapek who is actually writing about robots taking over um, the humans and a revolt against them. So this whole concept of a again fake human um, who is who is made to work for people and do the hard work is indeed uh, in the modern term of a robot again originating uh, from a Czech Republic and uh, Czech lands. So um, there is definitely something in the Czech Republic and uh, and the robots <laughs> and the fake humans uh, going on, but. I would say, apparently, this is something that is very much in our collective, uh, collective unconsciousness, and because I believe this story is so engraved in us, and we kind of like it so much for generations and generations, just the fact that the Ivan Mekele guy did not actually found the Golan in the synagogue. As he was e- as he was expecting, it's not really taking anything away from the wonder and the mystery of the clay made a uh, human of a golem of Prague, and definitely it's not stopping uh, the big big crowds of tourists that are coming um, in the Prague uh, to see it. So uh, that was what I had for you uh, for today for the radio show about golem. Uh, I hope you really, really like it. Uh, if you have any more questions, we still have about five more minutes uh, for the for the show. So, uh, if you would like to ask any questions, I'm going. Um, I'm going to be still here for about five minutes to respond to them in the chat box on parxradios.network/live. Uh, again, if you would like to listen from this show uh, from the beginning, or uh, if you would like to listen to it again. <laughs> If you really, really liked it, um, the show would be on spiritual-alchemy.uk in the section radio show where I'm always posting uh, the shows and there is quite extensive archive of this and all the other shows that, uh, that, that I've done. So uh, you can definitely listen to it for hours and hours if you feel like it. Um, also, I would like to invite you on Facebook where this show has a website or fan book fan page called Spiritual Alchemy Show, where you can listen uh, to the other shows as well, or the older shows, and also I'm always creating events uh, for the upcoming shows, so you can always know which topics we are going to be uh, talking about and eventually ask questions about them beforehand. So uh, Carter is asking, are we the Golem and Genie? I was wondering if Golem can be made to look human-like and walk amongst us. Um, yes, uh, according to uh, the legend, Golem was uh, human-like, and he was looking uh, just like uh, just like a human. Um, so even though uh, it was made out of clay, um, so um, Golem is supposed to be a uh, human-like. A genie, as far as I know, does not have material body uh, on its own. Uh, Golem does. Uh, so in a sense, the golem was meant to be, I would say, partially like a test of the abilities of the rabbi, because obviously, if you want to make piece of clay alive, you have to have very strong kabbalistic knowledge and kabbalistic, um, I would say, proficiency to be able to do that. So uh, if you're able to do that, that's a sign of a uh, very much maturi- maturity or proficiency in the Kabbalistic art. So partially it was some sort of like, I would say, a prestigious thing for a rabbi uh, to know how to make a golem. So, um, okay, so that seems like nobody has any more questions. <laughs> uh, so um, thank you so much, everybody, uh, for being part of uh, this show today and asking me all the questions. Um, the show will be back next Thursday, as always, the same time. Um, I'm going to continue uh, with this uh, Prague Alchemy uh, series, as there is still quite a lot of things to talk about, about uh, Prague and the magic that is here. I think finally the time came to talk about actually Rudolf II and Rudolfinian's, Rudolfinian's Prague, uh, where we have to mention things like Voynich Manuscript, um, all the alchemy, uh, the all 
all the stories about transmuting gold and uh, find out it was actually if it was true if they actually did created gold or not so that's what i have prepared for you for uh next week i hope you will like it and i wish you all of you a great great evening thank you so much